you have to think about uh, about the UN as as a as a, a platform. I mean, we have a huge convening power, and so we can bring stakeholders together to exchange views, to to express their opinions, and we try always to uh, to create uh, to to have initiatives to create uh, opportunities for all these stakeholders to uh, to to talk. Um, in order to to create the right ecosystem. Now, uh, clearly, what we experience right now that we are really at the verge of uh, a new era in in exploration, um, and uh, this is extremely important because uh, because clearly it's a boost to a certain number of uh, new technologies, new research, innovation. Uh, international collaboration. So we see this new boost uh, quite with interest. Uh, we look at that with, with quite interest. The point is um, that uh, uh, we also uh, are now uh, closely following what is happening in the field of the long-term sustainability of other space activities, because you know the number of satellites in orbit is increasing just only, let's say in 2020, um, you know that we, the Office for Outer Space Affairs, we maintain the register of all the objects launched into outer space. And this, this has done since the very beginning of the space activities. And uh, only in 2020, we register more than 1,300 satellites. And if you consider that overall in orbit, we have a little bit more than 3,000 3, uh, satellites um, active in orbit. Well, this means that only in 2020, we launched more or less 10% of all the objects launched in the last 10 years. And it's, so it's, it's a huge percentage. At the same time, we have to consider that there are a lot of operators, in particular on the private uh, side, that are planning a lot, thousands of satellites for their constellations. Uh, I'm talking about OneWeb, I'm talking about Starlink from SpaceX, for example. Uh, only, only Starlink uh, should reach 12,000 satellites soon. And we expect by 2050 to have 70,000 satellites in orbit, which means that, um, you know, the, the orbits are becoming congested and, uh, and also the number of space debris is increasing. So it's true that we have the so-called space debris mitigation guideline, guidelines approved already back in 2007, and also space debris are mentioned uh, several times in under the umbrella of the long-term sustainability uh, uh, guidelines, which have been approved just a couple of years ago. Um, even if they're not binding, well, overall is a combination between binding and non-binding uh, norms. So we have the treaties, we have the principles, and then we have these guidelines. Altogether, member states are really committed to fulfill uh, what they've been agreed upon, and they really are uh, working hard in order to maintain uh, their their uh, approach in, in following these guidelines. However, uh, orbits are already congested, so uh, it's absolutely important to have, uh, let's say, to go towards a, a certain regime, uh, what we call the rules of the road or the rules of the orbits, if you want, um, in order to preserve space for future generations and in also, also to support the commercial sector. Because, you know, if you are an operator and you want to have a stable business plan and you want to have uh, your assets protected in orbit, well, uh, having, you know, someone who is able to, uh, an entity, uh, super partners, I would say, that is able to uh, monitor the situation and eventually support also the private operators, the commercial operators to uh, protect their assets in space. Well, this is absolutely, in my opinion, sooner or later mandatory, probably better sooner than later. And, uh, and there are discussions ongoing uh, more and more on how to deal with this uh, important topic. And I'm sure that member states are really interested in, find, uh, in finding a solution. And, uh, and the UN, as I said, is the best platform uh, for this kind of discussions.